Welcome back, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining me in this session. Uh, it's going to be, I think, shorter one than usual. And we're going to talk about how to make the form it would feels and radio buttons, let's say custom, you know, you might not just want the standard actual uh, widgets from the library. So as you can see, I could just drag and drop the standard radio buttons, but they would look quite meek compared to, you know, uh, the designs you might have. And specifically, I have an example of how I want it to be. And this is again, a dummy uh, uh, prototype I've been working on in Sketch. And as you can see, I have a sign up form, which has some sort of input fields, which are around it. And they're, you know, they're not really standard. Uh, they're not really something you can just drag in and um, into the canvas and work with. And I also have uh, something like the radio buttons, which are custom as well. As you can see, they're much bigger, uh, much more prominent, much more user-friendly for mobile users. So let's get right into it. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do this. As you can see, it copied in. I'm going to adjust really quickly the dimensions for iPhone X, let's say, and just drag our content in, which should fit more or less. Let's just preview it really quick. Boom and it works. As you can see, none of the fields are actually doing anything. So what, what I would do if, if I would be um, a designer just starting off with this uh, mock-up, which is static for now, I would start recreating uh, bit by bit. So I already explained some of my key workflow ideas of how to do this, but let me just show it right away. So let's say if I would want to create input fields like that, I would just probably start start either by deleting all of it and just creating it from scratch. So let's say I can just drag in the text field, uh, check the same dimensions, actually just snaps it in, um, edit the border color. So let's say I could just pick it from the other things. I could also add, you know, the pattern, the visibility, the corner radius. So I can sort of recreate it bit by bit. So let's say that's how you, you would start customizing it. As you can see, I had seven pixel corner radius and I can just do that same here. And it looks more or less like it fits in. As you can see, this is our custom input field right now where users can type in any text. I can add a hint text. So let's say uh, email address or think or it was email and hide after typing. No submit button, that's fine. As you can see, it looks a bit off. It looks a bit different from the sketch design and I think we can adjust it slightly if we go back. So if we click on a hint text uh, selector, we can actually increase the font size, which I think we have to. So it's, I think, 14 at least, maybe 15. Um, we can also check more styles if we need to. Uh, the only thing what I can't find, and I don't think Action 9 still uh, has it, is the ability to kind of space it a little bit from the top. So in this case, I would do a little bit different type of customization. I wouldn't just, you know, customize existing widget. I would probably just drag in a brand new input field and place it on top of a static image. So that's a second way to do this. Uh, as you can see, it by default shows the border, but actually allows you to just disable the border. Um, just like, let's say I could just make it no color and that's it. And now you have that field on top of it, just stretch it so it aligns with the text. I can again add uh, a hint text to it, which is let's say password. Again, I can style it to match it a little bit and boom, and I have my own thing. And if I preview both, as you can see the native I have the same thing, but if I place it just slightly a little bit off, I can have the same styling as the down below uh, input field and you have that padding in front of it. So it's up to you to whichever you want to use. I tend to use this type of way, this type of approach and kind of because that allows me a bit nicer way to show things. Um, so if I just, let's say, copy it across for every of the fields, now I have my custom type of bits. I just need to edit, let's see, email address here and password confirmation. Boom, and now I have input fields which are custom. 
As you can see, um, the browser highlights it in blue. Uh, it depends on what stack you're using because it could be that Internet Explorer doesn't or let's say Firefox doesn't or different mobile uh, browsers wouldn't do it. So it doesn't really matter. The users are not really going to care. They're going to care the general outlook and if it actually incentivizes them to click through and actually do it. Um, now, how would you customize something like radio buttons I just showed before, which is a bit more complicated bit. So let's say, let me show you um, home radios, just as an example. And let me just really click, quickly select this, paste in our assets and boom, kind of half the page. You can do the same approach. You can either, you know, drag in a radio button like this and kind of replicate the style and replace the things. So let me just show you, let's say if I click on my radio button, which is new one, and just let me check what's the size in the original design, which is 50 by 50. And I click on it, I select 50, then I can select the border color for it. I think it's a bit darker like that. I can then select different text. Now the issue is that there is not as much of flexibility for text and you might need to add extra text, text fields. Um, it's really hard to align the padding. I could potentially say, okay, this is 15-ish. Um, I could say this is standard and kind of just go and replicate bit by bit as much as I can to fit with uh, the actual static design. Features free, let's say. As you can see, we, are, we can almost replicate it like one to one. I'm just gonna place it randomly somewhere so it doesn't clash with other items. Uh, you can just click on this icon, Manage Widget Styles, and then you can kind of customize of what how your radio button could look like. So let's say you could edit the text font, um, you could change the fill color, so the surroundings of a button, let's say in green. So it depends what you want to really achieve. Um, generally, I would go with white. Now, the only issue is that it's really hard to kind of like segment it. So let's say if I would want to set the border line color to let's say green, closest to what I have there, kind of like this, let's say. As you can see, it overlines the bits and makes everything green instead of just, let's say, the button, uh, but not the surrounding which, you know, usability wise, it's much better way to do so. And actually it's quite smart, but let's say, what if you have an edge case where you still want to do this? So I would bin the standard styling, which is quite powerful. And I would recreate bit by bit things like this. I would use dynamic panels to do so. So let me just show you how I would do so. I would convert this radio button um, and have few states. Let's say state one would be uh, active and then I would need another state, which is default. And in a default state, I would just delete that thing. So now I have two states, simple as that. And if you remember my video of dynamic panels, uh, you probably know how to do so. Or if you you know, you have experience, you know how to do so. The only thing what I would want to do now here is to kind of make a switch. And the switch is quite easy to make. Um, I can just replicate the dynamic panel since it's just two of the values. And let's say uh, do a switch. So I would just drag up the default so that's inactive and close it. And as you can see, we have two dynamic panels. One is active, one is not active. Uh, the easiest way to make that switch is to just create another dynamic panel with both of them together in. And for state one, have one active. For the second state, uh, just switch them around. So let's say I would have this one as a default. And, and in state two, it might be a bit confusing, I would have active as a default. So now I have two states. As you can see, there is a switch. To make it a bit more interactive, I would just probably take a hotspot and highlight the field. Maybe have another hotspot and highlight the field and just say, give this 
plan LNA, which is always a good practice, is uh, custom radios, let's say. And if I click this hotspot, um, I would want to add new interaction on the click and set panel state, custom radios to, let's say, state one. And then just maybe copy that same behavior if I highlight it to a second hotspot on click and just change that state to state two. And now if we preview it, it works pretty well. Now, it depends what you want to achieve. It depends how heavy you are into visual design and how complex you want your designs to be like, how you know complex your prototypes you want it to be. Um, if it's really complex like this one where you have multiple shades for border and the selector, you might want to do custom. Um, if it's quite simple and straightforward, but still you know different than the standard widget style, you kind of want to just use actual widget and go crazy with the options because they keep implementing more and more different options to set parameters and, and make it quite nice. So it's up to you. But this is the basics of how to do the customized uh, form input fields. If you like this video, give thumbs up, share with your friends, uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I really appreciate it and see you next time.